people that you see up here have taken off their jobs, they've taken time out of their days and their months to be able to present to you all. Listen, I want you to respect that because there's so much that the world says about your generation, that your generation is selfish and your generation doesn't care about anybody else but themselves. And I, I just refuse to believe that. I believe that you're better. I believe that there are some of you that are better than that. Amen? And I want you guys to understand what it, what it feels like and what it looks like to appreciate people from, from the people that, that design the t-shirts that you're rocking that are sweet to the bags and the necklaces that you're going to get and, the, and the, the band that practiced and the, the field team that put countless hours into making sure that your field games were a blast and competitive and fun and, and, and taught you something in the midst and all these individuals on the camera and all these people back there drumming and playing the guitar and, and, and people singing and Miss Reva up here sweating and just leading you in worship. The dancers dancing and United Dance Crew driving all the way up from Coolidge just to come up and come on. Can you guys give it up for all these people? Your counselors. All right, sit back down, sit back down. Because I see, I see, I see the adults giving up, giving it up a lot more than the young people. Young people, this is for the adults. All right, this is what we do at Elevate. If you, if this is like bigger than a hand clap, all right? When somebody, you're giving props to somebody. Have you ever had, heard of a standing ovation? When a person gets a standing ovation, it's everybody stands up and they just clap and clap and clap. But we, we kind of flipped it up, switched it, flick it, flick it, remixed it. And so what we do is at Elevate here is we stand up and we, we, we do a big O and you go, oh, all right? That's just give, that's like the highest props you can give anybody here at Elevate. Y'all ready? Young people, I want to see you give all these leaders and all these people that invested into this a big, huge, gigantic, Elevate, put your game face on, game day, baby. Oh, on the count of three. You ready? One, two, three. Yeah, that's good. All right, if there's a leader sitting around you, I want you to just look at them and say, I appreciate you. Thank you. Are you tell them that? Say thank you. A little thank you is good. All right? All right. We're good. We're good. Appreciate you guys. It's a good first night. Man. Man, oh man. Can we uh, out... Uh, Whoever, whoever's running the lights back there, can we just give a, get a little bit of lights on the enough for me to see these awesome, beautiful, smiling faces tonight? So you guys aren't just looking at my bald, shiny head. <laughs> Bam! I know it's yeah. It's, you even got to cover your face and all that. She's all covering her eyes. I know it's bright and shiny. <laughs> it's good stuff. All right, cool. Hey, do you guys have a Bible? It was in your things to bring list. Do you have a Bible? Some of you do, some of you don't. It's okay if you don't. You have to get it next time. If you don't have a Bible, we can, we can work something out. But uh, if you don't have a Bible, just look on with somebody close. Or what we'll do is we'll put the scripture up on the screen for you. How about that? Sound good? All right. Here's what I want you to do. This time... Um, when anybody, you guys have done great so far. This is a great first day, and so I give it, you know, I'm giving you guys a big standing O. You deserve a standing O. Uh, how, was, how were the field activities today? I had an awesome time. I didn't get a chance to get out there. I had to run down the mountain for a little bit, and so I'll be out there hiding in the trees watching you guys tomorrow. Setting up, setting up for the last day, because you know I got, I got a game plan going on, because game day is getting ready to go down on the on the field out there, and it's a water day in a couple days, and you got to watch, you got to watch me because I'm like a bounty hunter, I'll be, I'll be shooting, I'll be, I'm like a sniper, I'm shooting you from the trees, you don't even know where it's coming from, bam, I got you, I got your number, I'm looking for you, good, listen, um, this time, you guys have done great, 
You guys have done great. This has been a great first day. Camp, I know you guys have been up early, okay? How, who got up before 6 a.m.? Raise your hand. Oh, my goodness. Who got up before 5 a.m.? Don't lie. You guys got up at 4 something? You got up at 4 something just, well, you, why'd you get up at 5? You were up here. You guys got up at 4 something in the morning? Why? You wanted to look, she said, I wanted to look cute. <laughs> Woo, all right. Well, you did a good job. <laughs> I know you're tired and it's been a long day. So I won't, if, I won't keep you long. If you guys give me your undivided attention, we can get through this real quick. All right. Anytime somebody's on the microphone up here, um, anybody, anytime anybody's on the stage here, I want you guys to do me a favor. All right. I've been bragging about you. I've got, we've got guests coming in from all over the country, people that are coming in to minister to you. I've been bragging about you. Uh, Elevate has a name all over the country. Everywhere I go, I get to travel a lot. And people hear about this youth camp and hear about how awesome our young people are, how much you guys engage in worship and how much you just apply yourselves and how respectful you are and how hype you get in the sessions and how awesome you guys are in your questions and things of that nature in the breakout sessions. And so I, I, I am so uh, excited to be able to brag on you guys wherever I go. And so whenever somebody's up here presenting anything to you, don't let me down. All right? Deal? Pinky swear? All right. There we go. All right. Perfect. Perfect. Then we got a good deal. Uh, I want you guys to treat everybody better than you would treat me tonight. All right? Sound good? So give me your undivided attention. We're going to get in the Word of God, and we're going to just share just a little bit. Listen, that this is the, by far the most important part of everything we do, okay? I want you to look at, look at your Bible, and I want you to understand something about this Bible, the B-I-B-L-E. That's the book to me, the Bible, the B-I-B-L-E. The Bible is God's, listen, God's inspired word to us his people see back in the time back in the days of adam and eve when god created man he created man listen to me and he created mankind for worship and for fellowship for communion to be one with him he he, he wanted to be able to share his love with man man fell they they, they stepped into disobedient obedience and they sinned and it separated us from god and God wanted a relationship with us. It's always been his heart. It will always be his heart. He will never go away from you. He will never draw far from you. He always wants to be close to you. And so the Bible says that this word right here is, is the word that communicates his heart, his nature, and who he is to us. Everybody say, that's what's up. Whoa, so, so hold up, check this. So every time I open up the Word of God, bam, God's getting ready to talk. Wait, wait, wait. You mean God does, it doesn't have to be a big boom on the drums and oh, lo and behold. Caleb, this is God and I'm talking to you. Doom, doom, doom. No, that's not how God is. God, sometimes you guys want it, you, you, know, you know, you hear about things and we talk about, well, I heard the Lord and God's speaking and God's spirit's here. And, and sometimes you're like, oh, man, even in United Dance Crew's Illustrated Sermon um, or, or, or Human Video, it was so awesome. It was just real because the reality of feeling human sometimes is like, man, I don't feel like God's close. I'm trying to check the scene and I can't see him anywhere. I don't know where he's at, yo. I can't find him. But I can't hear him, but he's spoken in his word. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3.16, everybody say that, 2 Timothy. Come on, come on. You got to talk back to me. I'm going to come down there close, and I spit a lot, so you don't want that. 2 Timothy, ready? Say 3.16. One more time, 2 Timothy 3.16. It says this. It says that all Scripture, the word, you hear me? We're going to be teaching this word to you a whole lot this week. A whole lot. You're going to be getting this word a whole lot. 
And I want to make sure that before we shove off the ground, before we shove off the shore for the rest of this camp, that you guys understand how important it is when this word goes forth that you grab it. You want to know why? Because 2 Timothy 3.16 says that all scripture is God. <gasps> it's God breathed. The Bible says that God, can, can you imagine how big, like look at, look at my head. Do you see how big this head is? Bam. You want to headbutt afterwards? Okay, I'll win, I promise. All right, so check it out. The Bible says that, that God breathed and these scriptures come out. Every time he breathes, it's inspired. It's God breathed. It is given to us and it's his breath. And so watch this. Can you imagine how big God's lungs are? Can you imagine? I can't even imagine how big God's lungs are. But when, when he said, he breathed, he breathed, and he, everybody inhale, ready? One, two, three, take a deep breath. Hold it, 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 hold it. Now breathe out. Now hopefully you didn't just run somebody out of the front seat in front of you because your breath stinks. But, <laughs> but that's what God did. He breathed, and the scriptures came out. So listen. When you want to hear God and you want to know about God, you don't, have to, you don't have to hear some strong, deep, authoritative voice in some spiritual world that comes down from the clouds. All you have to do is open up your Bible and read it. Read it. Read it. And when you read it, God's speaking. Amen? Everybody say, that's what's up. So we're going to be speaking the Bible to you. We're going to be preaching the word to you. We're going to be teaching this thing to you because we want you to get it. Why? Because God wants a relationship with you. Personal. He wants you to know him. He wants you to know him good. Amen? Amen. So let's do that. Well, let's pray real quick. Father, we thank you. Come on, bow your heads. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it's life. We thank you that it's good. We thank you that it breathes life into our lungs. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would get the glory out of this moment. In Jesus' mighty name, that everybody holler back and say amen. 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 You, guys, um, you, you guys ever had an embarrassing moment? Anybody? Have you ever had an embarrassing moment? Okay. Who's brave enough to stand up and in like 30 seconds or less tell your most embarrassing moment? Uh, it's got to be good, though. Then don't be making it up. Don't be telling no lies. You ready? My man, my man with the cornrows right here. What's your name, bro? Oh, Dallas. Yeah, stand up, man. Oh, I need an extra mic. Come on, I need an extra mic. I, I'm going to need him. Come here, man. You want to get up here? One, two, three. Oh. If, if you talk real loud, this mic might pick you up right here. Can I just talk real loud? Yeah, just, you have to talk real loud. You got, a, you, got 30, you got 30 seconds. You're down to 28 seconds right now, homie. Oh, all right. Um. Can you hear him? Yeah. All right. Okay, here we go. Here's a mic. Most embarrassing moment. You ready? Here it goes. We were, in the, we were in the middle of an assembly at my school, and we were playing, like, volleyball against the teachers, and then one of the teachers wanted to be dirty, and he pants me. What? I hope he doesn't have a job. No, he doesn't have a job no more. Amen. <laughs> All right. Uh, one more most embarrassing moment. Girl. Right there in the pink. Yep. Come on, hurry. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Run, 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 run. You better run, 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 run. You can stand right down there. You got 30 seconds. Ready? Go. Hold the mic up to me. When I was playing soccer, and this boy, he kicked the ball and it hit me in the face. He hit you in the face? And you tracked him down, and you, and you did what? Oh, she's, oh, ladies. Oh. She said, I cried. Check this out. I feel like I have the best mom in the world. Some of all my friends here, a lot of y'all know my mom. She is the bomb.com. Let me tell you something. My mom, when I was your age, I felt like it was her God given assignment on earth to make sure that she put me in the most embarrassing moments and the most awkward positions in my life. Every time I turned around, my mom was embarrassing me. Like, 
One time, I was, uh, I could, you know, I, could, I used to be able to dance pretty good and have a little rhythm, you know, and back when, I'm, get, I'm really getting ready to tell you my age right now, ready? So back when I was in junior high, I was in seventh grade, and um, this dude named Vanilla Ice was really popular. <laughs> Y'all don't know who Vanilla Ice is, you weren't even born. You were not born in 1991. Were you? Oh, okay, the counselors. And he, did, he used to do this dance and, uh, with the bass line. Boom, 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 ba da boom, 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 boom. And he go, boom, 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 boom. And yeah, vanilla, ice, ice, babe. Doom, 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 doom. Okay, you guys act like you know it. You just heard it on the old school station. Um, <laughs> or on VH1's One Hit Wonders. <laughs> but look. So back then, believe it or not, I had hair on my head, and, and, and Vanilla Ice used to have big hair, and it was combed over, and it was bleach blonde on the top, and it was fly looking, it looked like all icy, and it was smooth, and you had these big hammer pants, and they're big hammer pants, and, and they were cuffed at the bottom, and I had my big, I had my penny loafers on, and I had this whole outfit, and big old belt, big old shiny gold belt. My mom, I used to dance, right? On, on, on the high school dance team, as, as a, when I was in junior high, I was good enough to make the high school dance team. And so we danced at halftime to show uh, uh, sporting events and stuff like that. Anyways, long story short, my mom thought I was so good, she wanted to start showing me off. So she wanted to start taking me around the cities and put, putting me in all these dance, com dance competitions. And so fast forward, there's a, there, we hear this dance competitions happening on the radio, right? This dance competition's going down. You went, it's, it's prize money. So everybody get involved. And so my mom enrolls me in the dance competition without me knowing, okay? I'm in seventh grade. When you're in seventh grade, it's kind of like not cool when you haven't even been through puberty yet. And like, hello, I didn't hit puberty till I was in 10th grade. Something like that. I talk like this until I was in 10th grade. <laughs> I'm serious. You know, I was bald, bald under my armpits, and had the boy, I'd be shooting basketball, and the guys would laugh at me, hey, you not hear these horses. And then I'd ball them up, you know. But everybody made fun of me, right? So I'm embarrassed because my mom wants to put me in this dance competition. So I go do this dance competition, right? And I remember one time, well, she, she told me it was like, a, you know, you got to get a routine together. So I got this routine together. I, you know, I was doing my eight counts, you know, doing all this stuff, right? I had it out. Five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You know, and I had a little backflip in there and everything, right? Okay, it was sweet, man. I was, woo, it was fly. I was going, I was going to rock these dudes, man. And it was everybody, it was older. I was going to go turn this place out, right? So I, I go, at that time, we used tapes. You guys don't even know what tapes are. We had tape cassettes, right? And so they recorded this, this song on the tape cassette, and it was this song. And it was like, I got the power. Y'all remember that? I got, the <laughs> I got the power, right? And so I go to this dance competition, and, and when we get there, there's a DJ there, and he's doing his thing, and everybody's around. It's like this older teenage club, and everybody's, you know, they come out, and they're doing, you know, the whole little dance thing where they're in a circle, and then they call the number of the person that was in the dance competition, and the person in the dance competition will go out to the middle, and they do their thing, and, you know, begin to dance, and they call the next number, then the next number, and then they call the next number, and then they call my number. So I walk out in the middle. I thought it was a coordinated dance competition, so I walk out in the middle, and I'm like, stop the music. I reach up in my back pocket, and I pull out my tape, and I walk over to the DJ table. I'm like, here, Mr. DJ, put that in, right? And they're all like, oh, what's, he get, what's, this, little, what's this little fella getting ready to do, right? So I put the, put the tape in the music and thing, and the DJ rolls it, and I get down like this. Bam. Right? The music rolls, and, I, and the music hits. I got the power, and I'm like, I've got the power, and I start dancing and all this stuff, right? And I'm tearing it up, man. Five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three. You know, my head, I'm counting it out. Man, I get done, and they're going, go, white boy, go, go, white boy, go, white boy, go. And I'm like, yeah, I'm killing it, man, right? And so comes, you know, everybody else gets done. They, um, they get, get the whole thing done, and they're like, all right, we're going to announce the top four, and the top four are going to have a dance-off of all these people. Bam, 
And number one, number one, number two, number three, lo and behold, guess who's number four? Me. Number four. I'm number four, man. So they get ready. They're dancing. It's a circle. This is the dance. This is for the championship, man. And they get out there, and everybody's going, go, go, go. And they're dancing out in the middle, and they get their thing. <laughs> and they call my number. I get ready. Come out there. Stop the t- <laughs> Stop the music. Pull my tape out. Go give it to the DJ. Put the tape in. Watch this. <laughs> Same dance. <laughs> it took them all a minute. I'm like, I got the power. <laughs> I got the power. <laughs> right? And everybody's like, for a minute, they were like, oh, man, he's cool. He's got it. And they're like, oh, it's the same dance. Like, he coordinated this. He choreographed it. And they all started laughing. And, oh, man, they're making fun of me. And my mom's over there like, oh, look at my baby. Look at my baby. You know? I'm like, give me my tape. <laughs> Let's go. I was so embarrassed. It was horrible. I remember another time, I was horribly embarrassed. Oh, my goodness. So I had a really bad cousin. Do any of y'all have like that one family member that's just like, oh my. Okay, so my cut, co- you know, you got to pray for your family, all right? But my cousin was like, like evil with skin on. Like if you like pulled back his, his scalp, I know he was growing horns somewhere because he was just crazy. This is my cousin. Like, I'm not going to say his name because I don't know. This might, this might get on film and somebody might see it, but he was crazy, right? And so everything that the devil did, I promise you, when I was a kid, in my life, everything the enemy tried to do in my life, it seemed like it came right through that brother, right to my life. I remember one time we were, and he liked to blow up stuff, shoot stuff up. We were in the country. I grew up in the country. He was just crazy, man. So we had these, they had these firecrackers around the 4th of July, and I grew up in Colorado, and he had these firecrackers. And so we had tree houses all over. I'm telling you, I grew up in the country, y'all. And so we built this tree house, and... My cousin was about six years older than me, and then my brother's about six years older than me, and they were buddies, and then my other cousin, which was my bad cousin's little brother, was about the same age as me, so we'd hang together, and then they would hang together, right? So we were always trying to be with the big boys and hang with the big boys and whatnot. Well, I remember they built a, they had built a, a tree house, like up about, I don't know, probably as high as, at least as high as that, that, that screen or the, the projector there, and he climbs up there one day, and he's like, oh, watch this. <laughs> and he pulls down his pants, right? And he goes, and starts like pooping off the top of the treehouse. Oh, nasty, right? So he's pooping, and he loved to blow up stuff. The guys are going to like this. And so he's like, watch this. I'm going to blow my turds up. And he goes down. I don't know why he's trying to blow up his turds. Don't, I don't know, okay? I'm like eight years old. And I, we're like, oh, nasty. We're running from it. He goes down there, and he sticks the firecrackers in his turds, and me and my cousin run to the top of the treehouse, right? We're like, we're getting in the treehouse. We got to be safe, right? And so we're like this, right? We're, we're sitting there. This is a big anticipated moment to see what happens to the turds when they blow up. And so we're down here like this, going, watching the turds. The tur- then he goes and he lights it, and then him and my brother, they run, and me and my little cousin, are sitting, his name was Josh, me and my cousin Josh are like this over the edge of the, of the treehouse, and we're sitting there like this, and then the fuse goes down, and boom, the turds blow up, and it was like all of a sudden slow motion, like, and the turds kept climbing, and they kept climbing, and I'm like, no, slow motion, no, all in my hair, oh my gosh, that's what happened to my hair, that's why I don't have it anymore, I just figured it out, it was my cousin's fault, I knew it, so check this out, that's nasty, right, somebody go, that's nasty, dude, but check this out, check this out, I was like, like, oh my gosh, I do not have poop in my hair right now. There's poop in my hair, and I'm like, oh, no. Lo and behold, at that moment, my mom, we lived about five houses down, and I wasn't supposed to be outside. 
that day because we were getting ready to go to we were getting ready to go to the bank and my mom was like we got to go to the bank so don't you go anywhere she, I'm gonna go get ready and we're gonna go as soon as as soon as I get done well I went my friend I saw my cousins outside playing so I went and played with them real you know up quick real quick we we're hanging out and while we were playing I got turds in my hair and right as soon as the turds get in my hair I hear my mom walk out on the porch and she goes Chad where are you get home I said we gotta go I told you don't leave and I'm like, oh, oh no, I'm in trouble. I left. And so I run home and, she, and, and I'm thinking, I gotta go hurry. I gotta, you know, can you imagine what's going through your head right now? You're eight years old, you're about to get a whooping because you're already in trouble and we're going to town and I wasn't supposed to leave and I'm running home. I'm like, oh my gosh, I gotta get in the house real quick. I gotta do something. I gotta wash my hair and I'm running home and I'm thinking, I gotta get in the bathroom. So I try to go get, run into the bathroom. I'm like, okay, mom. She's, she grabs my arm. She's like, no, we gotta go right now. And she goes like this and she's like, get in the car. And so I'm like, oh. and I sit in the car, I'm like, Oh, no. My mom did not just throw me in the car. I have turds in my hair, and we're going to the bank together in the car. So I'm like, so I roll down the window a little bit, right? And I try to, like, stick my, <laughs> I try to, like, stick my hair out the window. <laughs> and I'm sitting there like this, like, oh, Lord, please don't let her, please don't let her smell. Please don't let her smell the poop in my hair. Please. I mean, come on. This is a bad day. You, your cousin just blew up poop in your hair. Poops in your hair. You're in trouble already because you weren't supposed to be outside playing, and you were. And now you're in the car with your mom on the way to the bank with doo-doo in your hair. And it is smelling up the whole car, and I'm like, no. And she starts going, and I'm, th I'm just thinking, Lord, oh, my goodness. Lord, oh, I hope she doesn't, I hope she doesn't smell. All of a sudden, she's driving, and she goes. <laughs> she's like, ooh. And keep going. I'm like, no. And I'm, I, I promise you, I remember playing She's like, what is all over your hair? What is going on? And she starts hitting me, and I start getting, well, bam, bam, bam. What in the world were you doing out there? You did a skunk spray you? And blah, blah. it smelled like, it was bad. I don't know what my cousin ate, but it smelled like a skunk. And I was in trouble. I had poop in my hair, and I had to stay the whole rest of the day hanging out with my mom in the car. While she did her errands, I had to sit there with poop in my hair all day. What, a, what an embarrassing day. What a horrible moment. What a horrible moment. When I was in, that's pretty embarrassing, huh? When I was 14 years old, 15 years old, I can remember we were driving in the car. And um, I, luckily, I didn't go through puberty very, until late. But when I went through puberty, it was like in, it was like in fifth gear. <laughs> I, I, like, grew, like, six inches in one summer. I, I, I started getting hair on my face. My voice started changing. And, you know, when guys go through puberty, it's, like, an awkward moment because, you know, sometimes our voices start changing and it's like this. You can't, you know, you can't control it. And you start scratching and creaking it you know. And you squeak. You just be talking in the middle of your voice. You know. So we're in the car. We're in the car, and I've got my friends, and of course, all my friends have already grown up, and we're in high school. In high school, we're going into high school. We're going into freshman for our freshman year. We're going on a trip, uh, and we were we're hanging out, and we're just all laughing and joking in the car, and we're talking, and I just start talking, and I'm talking loud, and I, you know, it's cool, right? You're with your boys, and then all of a sudden, my voice out of out of control. I had no control of it. It just started going like I had been sucking on a helium balloon for like ten minutes, and I was like, yes. And it's like cracking, and all my boys are like, ah, <laughs> ah this is hilarious. Ah, you finally hit puberty. I'm so embarrassed. I'm so embarrassed. I was like, oh, man, I just want to go home right now. Man, it was embarrassing. The story in the Bible <laughs> about this little fella. He's like 15 years old. His name's David. He has been overlooked and overlooked and overlooked by his dad, by his brothers, and everyone around him. They're like, this dude right here, he's the one that is the brunt of everybody's joke. Like, my vanilla ice moment, bam, wasn't nothing on some of David's stuff. I mean, he's skinny. He's the littlest of, of, and he has seven big brothers. He's the little brother to seven big brothers. Come on, y'all. Can you imagine having seven big brothers, how much you would get picked on? And he's, he's the littlest guy, and he's skinny, and, and he, you know, he's just, he just a little brother. That's just it. 
This is David. Something happens, and, 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 and Jesse, it was David's dad. Jesse's David's dad, and in 1 Samuel chapter 16, I'm going to pick up there, and then we'll read it, 17, uh, and we'll hear about a story that's very familiar in the Bible. But if you guys can give me 10 more minutes, we'll wrap this thing up, and we'll go and get some good sleep so we can have an awesome rest of the camp. But in 1 Samuel chapter 16, there's this guy named David who shows up in the Bible for the first time and makes an impact and changes the game forever. Forever, ever, forever, ever, forever, ever. Look at somebody say, that's a long time. That's a long time. David comes to this, the, the, God, God speaks, listen, look at me. God speaks, and he tells the prophet Samuel to go to Jesse's house. This is David's dad. Who's Jesse? David's dad. He says, go to, the, go to Jesse's house because in Jesse's house, I have anointed, I have found a king for all of Israel. Wait a minute. Hold up. A king for all of Israel. This is a big deal. Do you understand who Israel is? Israel is God's chosen nation to be able to work his redemptive, which means his, 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 his uh, plan that brings us back to God through He's chosen Israel to bring us back to God through them. And he says, I'm going to find a king in, in, in Jesse's house for all of Israel. And so the prophet Samuel goes and he grabs his anointing oil. And he goes and he's going to anoint for God a king over all of Israel in the house of Jesse. He gets to the house of Jesse. And the Bible says that, that Jesse, this is, this is David's dad, has seven, has seven sons that he brings to the, to the party, to the, to the anointing party, to see who's going to be king. Listen, he brings them, and he lines them up. And the Bible says that, that the prophet Samuel comes, and he looks at his first, his first uh, son, and his name's Eliab, and he looks at him, and he's lo he looks good, man. He looks just like what it would be, to, and, and, and he looks like he has the power and the strength and the stature and the ability to speak and lead people in, a, in the right direction. He looks like he has what it takes to be able to be a king. So he looks at him. Seemed like that'd be it. And he goes, mm, he's not it. Next. And so he goes to his next son. Number two, looks at him on the outside. Things look good, man. It seems like he'd be, all right. No, nope. God's not, God hasn't chosen him. Next, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. He gets to the seventh son, y'all. And he's still like, wait a minute. This isn't the king. And you can imagine the prophet Samuel scratching his head going, wait a minute. God, you told me to come to the house of Jesse and anoint for you a king over all of Israel. Surely, and so he turns around after his conversation with God, he turns around and he looks at Jesse and, and he says, Are, don't you have anybody else? Because I know God called me to come to this house to find a king. And he goes, well, yeah. I mean, there's somebody else, but... Surely you wouldn't choose him. He's funny looking. He's kind of awkward. He's skinny. He surely isn't fit to be a king. And he's not even here. See, what happened was, listen to me, because many of you have been overlooked by people around you. Many of you have never had the opportunity to be able to hear the words that, that, that I am proud of you. Or you are, you're worth something. Or you're going to be great one day. Many of you have never had the opportunity to have a dad be able to look you in your eyes and say something to you that would, that would ignite the purpose inside of you and ignite the heart inside of you that would cause God's purposes to live out through you. Listen, let me put a little pause right there. Ready? You ready to pause the iPod real quick? Here we go. Pause the iPod. Click. Here we go. Put it on pause because I want to tell you this. In Jewish history, it is... The, it is, it is the, the man's job. And this is, I love speaking when young men are in the room. I love, I love the ladies too. But I love for these young men to hear this message tonight. Because it is a man's job to validate the family. It is a man's job. God gave us a job. Listen, 
to validate and to tell our family who they are. Listen, many, so many of us sitting right here tonight are missing that. We've never had that opportunity. In Jewish history, it was the job of the men to sit down and listen. In their culture, they every night they would have dinner together as a family. The family would get together and the dad would sit at the end of the table. And at the end of the table, he would, he would go around and he would look at every person in the family. And the dad would speak over every single person every single night, reminding them of who they are. He would speak over them and say, 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 uh, Joshua, don't you remember and don't you know that your name means Savior? Don't you know that you're going to be a rescuer in your life and in your purpose and in your de- Don't you ever forget every day. Could you imagine? Could you imagine having somebody every day, your father, speak over you and tell you who you are every day? It would be really hard to do something wrong, wouldn't it? It would be really hard to do something uh, th- that doesn't line up with that purpose because you're reminded every day, every time you got with your dad, he told you who you were. Well, listen, David isn't that boy. David isn't even invited to the party. So if there's one thing about David I want you to know tonight, it's that David feels you on that, ladies and gentlemen included. If you've never had anybody speak over you and believe in you, David knows. David understands that. The, the, the biblical history in David's life shows us that there are so many things that he has to go through in order to become who God called him to be. He learns to be who God called him to be by pushing through, putting his game face on, and being fearless in his life. And so he's not even invited to the party. He's out. You know what the Bible says? He's out there taking care of his dad's sheep. He gets his dad's sheep. He's taking care of them. He's handling business out there. And, 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 God, and, and God speaks to the prophet Samuel and he says, go get him. For surely this is the king over Israel. And he goes and he gets him and he brings him before uh, the prophet Samuel. Samuel finds him. He says, yes, this is it. And he anoints David at the age of 15. David, look at me, is chosen and anointed by God. Do you hear me? At the age of 15. Some of you are about four years away from that. Some of you are about two years away from that. Some of you are about one year away from it. Some of you are right there. Can you imagine being in a couple years, y'all? God telling you, you are getting ready to be the president of the United States. And you, hold up though. And you're 15, you're like, what? Me? You mean I am, wait, 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 hold up. Can I get a T.O., baby? It's time out right now because do you understand? I just want to, like, play my PlayStation or my Xbox 360. I'm not trying to be no, nobody's president. I don't even, I don't even have two pennies in my, in my piggy bank anymore because I, I bought hot Cheetos from the ice cream truck that ran, came by with the, with, the, with the music playing in the hood. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, do you understand what I'm saying? Can you imagine? This is what's happening to David. And David's chosen by God to be king over Israel. Listen, God sees in him, God sees in him greatness. God sees in him something that nobody else can see. And let me tell you something. It's the same thing God is saying to you tonight. God brought you up from the valley, from the desert, to this mountaintop. Listen to me. Give me your eyes. Everybody, God brought you here because he wanted to tell you who you are. He wanted to speak to you. It is not a mistake. Some of you might be like, man, my mom may be done. I'm still mad. I ain't even over it. Listen, you're, get over it right now because the sovereign God of the universe, hear me, hear me good. The sovereign God of the universe, the one who keeps you alive right now, the one who gives you breath in your lungs, the one who holds the sun, the moon, and the stars, and the earth on its rotation, the one who holds it all together, the entire universe, brought you here because he wants you to know who you are and how much he loves you and what he'll do to go there to show you. So he brings you here. And what happens is the same thing that happened with David, that David was anointed king at 15. But listen, listen. 
He never reigned on the throne until he was 30 years old. So, anointed by God at 15, told who he was at 15, but doesn't reign, it's not manifested. That's the big word that we use in, in, in preaching. It doesn't ever come to pass until 15 years later. Hear me, young people. You have purpose. You have great destiny. Some of you are going to hear God speak to your life this week. If you, if, if, and, and let me tell you something. Every single one of you has the opportunity and the ability to hear God this weekend or the, and, and, and throughout the next three days. Listen, if you'll just tune in to his frequency and hear him. If you'll just open your heart enough to let the King of glory, God, Christ Jesus by his spirit, who wants to draw you close to him and tell you who you are are if you just let him in he's going to speak to you but what he's going to do is he's going to give you the strength and 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 speak to you and give you vision for your life so that as you go through life your course will be changed forever this is the game changer this is the night this is night one and tonight today it's about tryouts and this is the tryout the tryout is simply that there's been a coach, and the coach has called you, and the coach is saying, I want you in the gym. Listen, I don't want you, I don't want you like David out there in the, in the field. I'm not a daddy who's overlooking you. Do you hear me? I'm not a daddy who's overlooking you. I'm a daddy who loves you, and I'm a daddy who's going to prove it to you. I'm a daddy who's going to give you purpose and show you what I'm, I'm, what I'm willing to do to, 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 to show you and allow you to grasp that. This weekend, God's going to do that for you if you just let him do it. Amen? Amen. But watch this. I'm going to finish right here. Right after that, God anoints him. And you would think, right, are you kidding me? The God of the universe just anointed me. To be king over Israel. You would think it's time to roll out the red carpet. It's time to get everything you need. It's time to do whatever it is. Listen, that, that it's time to party. It's time to get crunk. It's time to turn up. It's time to turn your swag up. It's, let's go, man. I'm the king. I'm the king of, the, uh, of Israel. No. You know what God does? Listen to me. And this is good theology, which means it's, it, theology means the study of God. This is teaching you who God is and what a relationship with Jesus is like. He's going to anoint you, and he's going to give you purpose here. But listen, David goes through 15 years of trials before it ever comes to pass. He goes through 15 years of seasons. I get the opportunity to have for the last 11 years to speak to tons of professional athletes. I'm the chaplain for the Los Angeles Dodgers, the Major League Baseball team, and I'm the chaplain for now the Pittsburgh Steelers. I, have, I was with the Arizona Cardinals for nine years. Now I'm with the Steelers. And I have the opportunity to minister to those guys in the locker room every single week. Every single day I'm down there grinding it and banging it out with these guys. Troy Palomalu and all his head and shoulder shampoo commercials and all that. I get the chance to minister to these guys. But listen. It's a season that I get to go through with these guys. And what, what I get to see in the game day of their life in this season is much opposition. It's not just that we suit up every single Sunday and, 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 and we do prayer and I, I lead team prayer after I've already done a service for them and taught them the Bible and sent them out. And then we go and, and they'll go and get taped up and they'll, they'll get their cleats on and they'll get their Under Armour on and they'll get their pads on and they'll strap on their helmet. And then we bow down before we run out of that tunnel and we pray. And we pray, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we have forgiven those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever amen we all say that together get up off our, our knees everybody slaps high fives let's go and they go out there and they play a game listen the game requires that there's some opposition that takes place they don't just go out there and 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 mock and run through plays and there's no opposition and they're you know making sweet catches Woo! and they're dancing into the end zone high stepping and stuff man no there's opposition 
you better watch out because, because when, when a receiver comes across the middle to get, a, to get a catch like that, there's a linebacker who's sitting there ready headhunting to drill him in the, in, the, in the gut to try to put him out the game. It's called a game. It wouldn't be a game if there wasn't some opposition. And so that's what happens in our life. And we think this is wrong thinking about God. We think that if we have a relationship with God and we step into to a relationship and we grab God's hands and we, 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 we ask for forgiveness of our sins and so on and so forth, that life should just be easy. <clears throat> Wrong. Matter of fact, when you get with God, sometimes stuff gets a little tougher because the devil doesn't like you anymore. But you're not on his team. Hold up. That dude just got the truth about the word of God? I'm going to get him. But listen. We have the victory inside of us because of Jesus Christ who died on the cross for us. Why, David understood this, right? David understood this because, watch this, after he's anointed king, after he's anointed king, the next chapter in chapter 17, the Bible says that he goes and he has to face this nine foot nine, nine foot nine inch giant named Goliath. He's got to go and fight this guy who is trying to keep Israel and David and everybody included out of their purpose and out of their destiny. Do you guys hear what I'm saying? Trying to oppose them. This is a big game day right here. This is a big game day, but David understands that he's chosen by God. And he goes, and, and everybody's making fun of him. Ah, ha, ha, this 15-year-old, can you imagine? I mean, for 40 days and 40 nights, yeah, we have the musicians come. For 40 days and for 40 nights, Goliath, the Bible says, is standing on this side of, of the mountaintop. And there's a valley in between them. And, and the children of Israel are over on this side. And Goliath, with his big old 10-foot self almost, standing up there, he's, and he's making fun the Bible says he's talking about all the all the people of Israel the armies of the living God the Bible says he's making fun of them for 40 days and for 40 nights he would come out and he would speak to them and the Bible says he would strike fear in the hearts of the people of Israel so he would speak and he'd be like Mufasa Ooh. he's saying and, and fear comes out in the children of Israel, and they're getting ready to fight, right? Because they gotta go, they gotta go in the purpose and in the direction that they're called to go in. And but Goliath comes out every day. And as soon as he comes out, they're like, oh, never mind. And they get scared and they're shaking in their boots and they retreat. And the Bible says this happens for 40 days, but watch this. In 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 verse 48 of 1 Samuel chapter 17, you need to put it up, I'm just going to read it. It says, so it was when the Philistine arose, that's what, that was the tribe that Goliath was from, and it says, he came and he drew near to meet David, that David hurried and he ran to meet this Philistine. So here's what happens, Goliath comes out because he's the champion of, of, of Gath, he's the champion of, 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 Phil, of, Phil, of the Philistine army, right, and he represents the entire army, and so um, in that day, there would be a champion that would re represent the army. And so Israel doesn't have a champion. There's nobody willing to stand up and fight for God. The world keeps scaring them. How does that play out? I'm afraid. I'm too, I'm too afraid. I, got, I can't lose my popularity. I can't, I can't, I can't. Stand up for God and not, not just, you know, make fun and talk, talk the same talk and, and curse and cheat and lie and steal and smoke and drink and, and, and all this, that, and the third. Because, because people might not dig me anymore. They might think, think of me some kind of way. But David gets sick of it. He gets sick of it. And he's like, I cannot no longer let my generation be afraid to stand up against everything that's coming against our generation. There's so much happening in your generation, young people. I told you that you guys are a part of this generation, and, and they've labeled you all, and they've said that you guys are called the millennials. The millennials are this generation of young people who, and, and it's your generation coming up, that you all, I think you're kind of like on the tail end of it, but... Anyways, they say you're the most narcissistic, which means you're the most into yourself than any other generation in the history of the world. Think about it, though. Everybody on Instagram talking about. Like, 
You know what I'm saying? Everybody's into themselves. Everybody talks about themselves. Everybody, every, it's all about me, 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 me. They say you're narcissistic, which means you're just into yourself. You're just fully yourself. They say, they say that you guys don't understand how to respect people. They say that this generation doesn't work hard because you want everything quick and you, want, and, you, and you have a sense of entitlement, which basically means you, somebody should be giving it to you because somebody should be giving you whatever you need and whatever you deserve because you, just because you deserve it. They say you don't want to wait for anything, that you're a microwave generation. You don't want your food to c- slow cook in a, in a crock pot. You want your food in a microwave. Hurry up. Boom. Because I want to eat right now. And so understand what I'm saying. This is what the world says. This is Goliath standing out here saying all this stuff about your generation. You know what it also says? The world is saying? The world is saying that this generation amongst you all that the church is dying. That the church of Jesus Christ, the God who gives us the opportunity to have life forever, holds little to no value in your generation's minds and hearts. This is, these, are, these are the giants. This is the giant that keeps screaming at you all. Scaring you back in your place. But think about it. David, check it. David runs. The Bible says he, I love that, man. He runs. To the, he, doesn't, he doesn't walk slow. He doesn't go, oh, man, I'm scared. The Bible says this little 15-year-old kid, a, a boy among men, runs down to the battle. And he says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that would try to defy the armies of the living God? He says, basically, this is, what he sa- this is what he's saying. Who is this God who thinks he can stand up against, or who is this giant that thinks he can stand up against the armies who are in covenant and who have a promise, who have, who have a coach that has a game plan and his hand up on this team's life called the living God? God has, a, has an agreement. He has a deal with you. When you step into a relationship with him, you have the victory. And David knew that, and that's why he said that. He said, who is this? I'm running down here. He said, I don't care what it looks like. I might be five foot five and, a, and, a, and, a, and a 120 pounds dripping wet. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter about my stats. It doesn't matter how good I am. It doesn't matter what I can do. It's about what God can do through me. And so he runs down, y'all. He runs down there to the fight, and he draws out. The Bible says he draws out five, five smooth stones from a riverbed, and he gets a stone. And, and instead of fighting with Saul's armor and everybody laughing at him, all his boys are laughing at him. Can you imagine? He's in this moment where he, he's so easily embarrassed yet again. His brothers are there. They're laughing at him. Can you imagine how embarrassed their brothers are? And his brothers are like, oh, God, here goes my little brother out here trying to, oh, he's going to embarrass the entire family. Can you imagine? Like, oh, Lord, no, please don't let him come out here. Try to act cool and big and tough right now. This is not the time. That guy's a champion. He, like, cuts people's heads off. Don't even think that you're so big right now, David. And David, so they put Saul's armor on David, and David's like, no, I can't fight like that. But he does know who he is. He understands who he is. He understands that he has a testimony. And he, he answers his brothers and his friends and all the people, all the people that are up against, or, you know, saying all kinds of stuff about him. He says, listen, you weren't there. You weren't there when, when, when I was back there tending to my dad's sheep and a lion came roaring, raw, and tried to kill my dad's sheep. And I, I fought him off and I killed him. You weren't there. When a bear came, tried to kill my dad's sheep, and I fought him off, and I killed him alone. So if, I, if, if my God gives me victory in the lion, with the lion and with the bear, who is this giant? God will do it again right here. And so he runs down there, and that's why, listen, that's why you have to remember that God has been doing things in your life. You do have victories, and you do have things in your life that should give you confidence that it doesn't matter what you face in your life, you can get through it with God. Amen? And so he gets his rock. This is all it takes. He gets his rock, and he puts it in his sling like this. And his slingshot, he gets that rock, and he begins to 
to, to wave his, his slingshot as he's running and drawing near to the giant. And the Bible says he lets go of that rock. Boom! And the rock, it flies and spins through the air. And the giant runs out to get it with his huge spear, his, his, his 125 pounds of armor. Or an armored jacket and a 20-pound shield and a huge, huge, enormous spear. And while he's, while he's trying to kill David with all this stuff, here comes this little bitty rock. And it poof, spinning through the air. And the Bible says it hits Goliath right between the eyes. Boom. One shot. The rock drives straight into his head, and the giant falls down flat, and he's dead. All because of one young man who understood that it wasn't about what he could do, but it was about the fact that his faith was in God, and God was able to give him the victory every time. Listen, I'm going to play something. I'm done. But I want to I wanna tell you guys tonight. I want to tell you guys tonight. Wait, wait, I made these towels for you. I made these towels for you with this in mind. I made these towels for you with this in mind, though. Listen. That, and this is where we'll be pre te preaching and teaching you guys for three days. The rest of these three days. That there is nothing that you should fear. That you should be lion-hearted in your life. You should be courageous and bold and strong because God is with you. And these towels say fearless on them because there's nothing that you should fear in your life when God is with you. There's nothing too hard. There's nothing too big. There's nothing too great that God cannot fix in your life, whether it be your family problems, whether it even be your doubt, whether you, you struggle with even knowing if God is real or not. Do you hear me? There's nothing too hard, but you just bring it to God. You bring it to God, and you pull out a rock. You get that one rock, and you dream real big in your life. And you pull out that one rock, and you understand that God is with you. And if God's with you, he's, give, he's able to give you the, 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 the ability to win every victory in your life. Amen? Amen? I want you to do something with me. I want you to stand to your feet. We're done. Let's just leave your bag on the, either you can put it on your back or you can put the bag on your back. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. A lot of you, listen, let's don't talk, but I just want you to stand up. Just give me your undivided attention right here. Get your bag. Put it on your back if you want. It doesn't matter. But tonight, it's, it's really, for me, it's twofold, okay? On one hand, I want to say to you that I can hear God saying that even though somebody, everybody, it feels like has overlooked you in your life. Maybe you've never had anybody make, made you feel like you're accepted. Maybe you've never felt like you've had a parent ever love you or anybody ever really care about who you really are. Tonight... God is saying, listen, I brought you here because I want to tell you and show you how much I care about you. One. And two, I believe God is looking like this. You know what the Bible says? I love this. I love this scripture. The Bible says that the eyes of the Lord, they're roaming. Can you imagine the eyes of God? Do you know what, what are in the eyes of God? Fire. They burn with passionate fire. The fire of the love that's in his heart. And they're looking, watch this. The Bible says they're looking over the whole earth. And you know what he's looking for? The Bible says he's looking for someone that he can show himself strong in. He's looking for just someone who will be faithful to him. He's looking for someone who will say, God, this is my life, but I'm giving it totally over to you because I want you to be glorified. I realize that I didn't make my life. I realize that I was not the one who, 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 who fashioned and formed my life. I'm, I realize I'm not the one who keeps my heart beating, and I realize the one I'm not the, the one who, who gives my uh, lungs breath. And God, I want to give you glory with my life. I want to be faithful to you. And the Bible says that that heart, he's going to flex through. Boom. He's going to show off his strength through you. 
if you'll just give your life to him in faithful, faithful commitment. Amen? That's good. That's good. Listen, listen. So number one, I want to I want to I want to do a call, and I, I, first off, I'm gonna we're gonna ask you a lot of a lot of times this this week we're gonna ask you to respond, okay? Because it's there's power in the response, your action. If God's tugging on your heart, then it's important for you to respond to that. Do you hear me? And so tonight, I'm gonna ask first off for those of you who feel like if if you were to die tonight, if you were to to die tonight. And you had to meet God tonight. And you were unsure that you were going to have the opportunity to go to heaven and, and be in heaven forever with God. And the only way that happens, y'all, is by asking Jesus into your heart to be your personal Lord and Savior. To believe that he, he's the one who sacrificed his life and, and brought you by his blood shed on the cross. Brought you close to God in forgiveness of your sin. The Bible says he was laid in the grave, and on the third day he rose again, representing our victory over even death. Sin and death is defeated in Jesus. And when you put your faith in him, and you open up your heart and you give it to him, the Bible says, listen, that you'll be able to live in eternity forever with God. So if you feel like, listen, you do not have a relationship with Jesus, and you want to ask, ask Christ into your heart to be Lord of your life tonight. I want you to be bold. I'm not going to ask you to close your eyes because honestly, you're going to have to stand up for Jesus in front of your friends anyways. So if you can't do it here, you definitely ain't going to be able to do it down the mountain. So I'm just going to ask you to get out your seat and say, now, 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 now listen, hold up. I'm not talking to those of you who said, who, who know you're, you've been saved before, but you've been kind of sinning a little bit and you've been kind of out from with God. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about those of you who say, I, I've never asked Jesus into my heart, and I want to ask Christ into my heart and mean it. Maybe you've asked, you've said the prayer, but you've never meant it, and tonight's your night. Okay, so right now, I'm going to ask you first to come up here. I need my pastoral team, and I need some, uh, Ian, I want you to help. Chris, come on. James, come on. I want some of you guys to help. Uh, Jason, Rashad, you guys come up. Just, just male counselors, just come on up here. I, I feel like we're going to need this support and the ladies I need I need some of our lady counselors and staff to come to the front here Paula Beverly uh, Carmen Trina uh, Lourdes yeah I want you guys please come to the front we're gonna we're gonna pray for these young people Diera India Sansa Ray let's come up here we're gonna pray for these young people listen the first thing I want you to do, uh, these people are just standing up here. We're just going to simply pray with you, okay? But that, that first call is for those of you who say, I don't know if I know Jesus for sure. I want you to get out of your seat, and I want you to come down here on the count of three. You ready? Be bold. This is your chance. Ready? One, two, three. Just get out of your seat. Come on. That's it, ladies. I appreciate it. I sure wish the men would stand up and, and, and be, be bold. It's awesome to see these ladies. I sure wish some young men would be bold. That's right. That's right, young man. That's right. That's right. That's right. Anybody else want to receive Jesus tonight to be Lord and Savior? Anybody? Anybody? Okay. Come on, you keep coming. Thank you, buddy. Thank you guys for being, being yeah. Thank you for being honest. Thank you for being honest. That's awesome. Now, listen. Now, the next thing, the next thing is, while they're praying, go ahead and pray. I want you guys to just lead them through a prayer of salvation. Minister to their hearts, though. Minister to them and help them understand, help them understand the gospel up here, okay? Take a moment to help them understand the gospel. Now, the next part, I'm going to ask you guys, those of you to come. Yeah, we can have the ladies pray with the guys, too. Yeah. So listen, the next part is I've been overlooked in my life and I've, I feel out of place and I feel like nobody has ever really loved me. And I feel like, you know, I'm talking about that, that moment when David didn't have that chance to hear a father speak over him. If you have an alt against your dad or you feel like I've never had a dad in my life and there's hurt there, I want you to come here and at this altar, we're going to lay it down together and, and, and just come on. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. Guys, ladies, come on. Come on. I feel out of place. I feel like I'm, I'm not loved. I feel, I feel like nobody's ever really loved me. Come on, get out of your seat. And come on. Just come up here. Amen. Amen. And then listen, the last thing that I want to pray for tonight is those of you who say, I'm like David, and I want to be that young man or that young lady that cares about the things of God in my generation, and I'm willing to run to the battle. I want to be that one who God uses to slay the giants in my life and slay the giants in my generation, and I'm ready to step up for God, and I'm ready to run to the battle for Him and stand up for Him and fight for Him. This is game day, baby, and I'm a game changer, and I'm ready for it to start right now. Get out your seat, and I want you to come pray right now. Come on. If that's you and you mean it, I want you to get out of your seat and come on. I'm a game changer. I'm a game changer and I'm ready. I'm ready. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Come on. We're going to pray for these young people tonight. You're a game changer. Hallelujah. Now the rest of you, I want you just to... Just if you need prayer at any time, come to the altar, okay? But we're going to take just a moment here, and we're going to pray for these young people, all right? that out. This is fun. This place with worship and prayer. Leaders, it's a great first day. We traveled very, very far in the spirit. Let's worship the Lord, everybody. Come on. You are the risen King. Hallelujah. Counselors, if you feel led to come up here and pray, let's go ahead and do that. If you feel like any 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 of you volunteers come, let's let's just make sure we know what we're praying for. So let's ask them. I need some more help over here with these men. You don't have to by any means, but if you feel led to, please come. Ladies, come pray with these young people. Look look them in the eyes though, okay? Look them face to face. Tell them who they are. Pray for them. Ask them their name. Ask them why they came. 